Huge news out of Kansas, which voted to protect the right to an abortion in its state constitution. It was the first state to vote on the issue after the Supreme Court overturned Roe versus Wade. ABC's Zareen Shaw joining me now live for more. So let's talk about what this vote means for Kansas, Zareen, and the rest of the country. You know what, it's really significant, but it also came as a surprise both to the country and also to folks in Kansas. They thought, they thought this abortion vote would be a lot closer and they thought it would take a lot longer to get results. But with majority of the results in, over 60% of folks in Kansas voted no on this referendum and about uh, just under 40% voted yes. Take a listen to some of the reaction from last night. It's a huge victory for Kansas, for women, for reproductive rights in America. It sends a message that the women are coming out of the woodworks. <laughs> like, we are not going anywhere, and we are going to protect ourselves. The last 50 years haven't shown anything. We've been fighting. I, we're not going to stop fighting. No, we don't want to be known as an abortion state. We want to have some limits, and we want to have the people have the right to say what they want in their own state. And the overwhelming no vote just proves that People in states can stand up and say, no, you're not going to control my body. And I hope this is an example for other states. So last night's vote means that the right to abortion in Kansas remains. So what would have happened if it would have passed? Well, Republic Republican lawmakers could have restricted abortion or they could have banned it as well. What makes this really interesting, though, this is the first vote since that Roe reversal, and this is happening in Kansas. They have 350,000 more Republicans than they do Democrats. It's a very red state. Trump won by over 15 points there in the last election. And so this has a really big impact on Kansas. It also has a big impact on the states surrounding Kansas. But the big question now is, what happens in November? We know these things don't exist in a vacuum. These votes don't. So it'll be interesting to see what effect this has on other elections. Kira. Oh, yeah, and the impact around the country. All right, let's talk about some other primaries, okay? In Arizona, the race for governor, still too close to call. But former President Trump's pick, uh, Kerry Lake, is declaring victory, right? And then in Missouri, you've got that tight race. It turned into a blowout with Eric. That's Eric Schmidt, by the way, winning the Republican mm -hmm. nomination for Senate. And then Michigan, uh, Republican Congressman uh, Peter Meyer, who voted to impeach Trump, he lost to an election-denying challenger backed by the former president. So, Zoreen, looking at all of this, Trump clearly still holding influence with the Republican Party. Yeah, and he has a lot of it, right? Okay, the Peter Meyer one, that, that case is really interesting. It's in Michigan. He was one of the 10 Republicans in the House to vote to impeach Trump. And Trump did not forget that. So he endorsed his opponent, John Gibbs, who's an election denier. But it wasn't only Trump who threw support for his opponent. Dems also really promoted John Gibbs. And, you know, they wanted an easy race, and they're willing to take that gamble. And so that's what made that dynamic so interesting, both Trump, but also the Democrats sort of pushing against him for his opponent. So we've also been following uh, the Senate, which passed this veterans health care bill to expand benefits for millions of veterans exposed to toxic burn pits during military service. What kind of impact uh, could this make now? Yeah, it's a historic vote. I mean, uh, it favors veterans. The mood in the in the Capitol last night was really something. We had a reporter there. Um, she said it was a really rare, you know, experience. There were 50 to 75 veterans there. Very rare for you know this COVID era. John Stewart was there as well, and they all waited for that vote to take to take place. It passed 86 to 11. A lot of bipartisan support, and there were hugs. There was emotion, and the PACT Act basically allows veterans who are exposed to toxic chemicals from burn pits to get the medical help that they. Need. They don't have to prove that they need it. And a lot of people have made the case this is a matter of life and death, and it almost did not happen. A lot of Republicans were looking at the budget, they had a lot of questions on some aspects of it. It did finally pass last night, though, Kira. Yeah, good news for vets. Serene Shaw, thanks so much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.